What's up, you filthy casuals? Welcome to the Casual Shenanigans Gaming Podcast, a podcast all about everything PC gaming related because Joel is not here tonight. Freedom! I'm one of your hosts, Jerem Gaming. I'm joined by Dave, and this is the 64-bit podcast, twice the memory of the previous podcasts. <laughs> I don't have any more 64-bit jokes. The graphics are smoother. Uh, Daisy servers have more tick rate. 64-bit is the... Yes, that was definitely the worst way yep. you possibly could have done that. I'm going to eat on this podcast, breaking all the rules of things you're allowed to do on the internet, because I'm hungry. So uh, Dave has a, important announcements to make now, while because I'm hungry now. So Dave, go ahead. Yes. Um, I, like a responsible adult, ate before the podcast. That's the remains of my spaghetti right there. That's my, that's my announcement. Just was out that, hustling, that was you know? Re- just making that's that money. Re- referring to, right? Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. you know, the spaghetti announcement. Yes. In all serious, seriousness, guys, uh, we're talking a little bit about how you guys can support the podcast um, tonight. Easiest way is iTunes reviews. It actually helps us get up in the iTunes ratings, helps people find the podcast easier, and um, and all that sort of jazz. And apparently, they're region specific, so we need to get some like uh, some continent like review wars going on. Who wants to be a continent ambassador? <laughs> I'm pretty sure North America is is way ahead, but Australia has what two or three reviews now. Woo! And I know you British listeners out there, you guys can get in there and get some reviews going. Um, because uh, I sent on a Teamspeak, and you guys all have British accents. Let's just face it, okay? I know you guys Most are. Most of them out do. There. You guys are staying up till <laughs> six a.m. for whatever dumb reason. <laughs> They're fanatical. It's beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and mute my phone because somebody won't stop retweeting me. You guys are crazy. And thank you for your support, but stop retweeting Dave right now. <laughs> it's like uh, you know, going to like an important meeting. You always got to remember to mute your phone. Um, and the other thing was mentioning Patreon once again. If you guys missed our original Patreon podcast, it's a way that you guys can support the podcast monetarily. And you actually get rewards for it. Like We have little perks that you guys get based on the level that you're supporting the podcast. And it's already helping us to get some new equipment, like Debbie has gotten an actual headset and uh, headphone set. It's not just a microphone from Staples anymore, so that was exciting. No more. Uh, Mark has a good mic now, too. All right, that's right. Mark has a, a good microphone. And we actually have a couple of long-term goals for Patreon. Uh, right now, it's also helping to pay for our TeamSpeak server that you guys are hanging out in a lot. Which is um, working better now. <laughs> yes. Thank you, host that was terrible before. Um, we need to uh, post that in the, in the description too for this podcast. If you guys are listening and have not tried out our TeamSpeak yet, uh, come by and hang out. It's good fun. Good fun. But <laughs> long term goal, we would love to actually have a Daisy community server going in say November or December. I think our goal for Patreon for that is like two hundred or two fifty, somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys can check it out. At patreon.com slash casual shenanigans. Is that the correct URL? Yes. Okay. So that is all of our uh, our promo oh, jazz for I, I was able to finish eating, so you 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 stalled long enough. <laughs> that Thanks. worked that worked pretty well. Yeah, thank you guys for your support as always. Keep hanging out in TeamSpeak. And uh, let's let's aim for that DayZ server because I want to steal all your vehicles. Well, your you vehicles. know, yeah, but let's you know, it it wouldn't kill us if we waited until it, it worked well, but you know, that's that's fine. I said December. You think, it's gonna, sure, you think it's gonna work I'm sure well then? I'm sure tents will work by December. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> don't, don't, just don't. I believe. That's nice. <laughs> it doesn't change reality, but it's cute that you believe. Okay, so, um, Lakey Soldier, who just came in, uh, you didn't really miss anything. Just us selling ourselves while I finished my dinner because we are the epitome of professionalism. Uh, there was a and, lot of fork noises. <laughs> it is now time to start with the news. Watch this. Watch this time code going in. I it, can't watch I, it. I have other tabs. I only have three monitors, Dave. I don't have enough. I don't have <laughs> enough. Um, if you're uploading something in the background, by the way, you might want to stop. I don't know if you have anything else going on, but your your Skype's oh. taking a dive. So, it's just Skype doing its thing. <laughs> Microsoft, who cares about PC gamers, like they keep telling people, um, or they, they say totally. they do, it remains to be seen. Uh, that's kind of a big hint towards what our main topic is tonight. But uh, they have released a new gaming controller called the Xbox One Controller Plus Cable for Windows. That's the title. Xbox One Controller who? Plus Cable for Windows. 
<laughs> what balding cubicle dweller named that? That's and it's a it's a wired Xbox sad. One controller, um, specifically designed for the PC platform. Supposedly, what it actually is is a wireless Xbox One controller with a USB micro USB charging cable. So, at in the promotional picture. Uh, the guy is using it and it's plugged into a surface tablet, which is plugged into a large monitor and he's wearing an ugly green headset. So I guess he's gaming on a surface tablet that's plugged into a huge monitor. So he's playing something that stupid. Thing? Well, the, I mean, this, if you have the surface pro, you can run windows apps. He could be playing a steam game. Um, I mean, he, you could probably play TF two, but yeah, so that, that's, that's the first news item. Um, I mean, I think, you know, what, what they really meant to say was that, it's a controller that a lot of research went into, a lot of careful thought and design for the Xbox One. And then they briefly thought about adding the cable to it, and that's the, that's the thought for the, the PC, basically. Yeah, and I mean, I, um, I like <laughs> having a controller for the PC. It's nice to have one for some games that just work better with it, like uh, Watch Dogs was good with a controller. Um, you know, most driving games I play with a controller. Uh, Dark Souls 2 I'm playing with a controller. But I don't see why I would sell an Xbox 360 controller to get the Xbox One. Like, the Xbox 361 One works fine. The only reason people buy Xbox One controllers is because you need them to play it with Xbox One. So, who knows? I do prefer the analog sticks as well as the texture. Like, the texture for me made a, a big difference in London last year. That kind of, like, a little bit of rubberized texture like the Nexus 5 has. I mm -hmm. love that little bit of uh, rubber texture. That was fantastic. But it's not $60 fantastic. I still have Joel's broken 360 controller that I use for stuff, so... <laughs> Thanks, Joel, I, I think. <laughs> I'll never listen to this. Um, Final Fantasy. I Now, I never really played the Final Fantasy games, but they're obviously a huge gaming franchise, and Final Fantasy XIII is confirmed for the PC and is releasing next month. This was not a popular one, by any means. I mean, it sold lots of copies, but no one really liked... Final Fantasy 13 uh, as a like a suitable next Final Fantasy game. It was kind of like a letdown. It was very very linear apparently. In some parts, it was wasn't really anything better than like an on rails RPG action game. But uh, it's coming to the PC. So if you like Final Fantasy, you might be interested in that. Speaking of old games coming there, this isn't really a news item, but there were rumors that the Metal Gear Solid collection, all the Metal Gear Solid games were coming to the PC because it was called like the Metal Gear Solid collection, I think was the name. And uh, yeah, it turns out that's a fashion line and not actually the games. So the games are not coming to the PC as far as we know. Well, that was unexpected. Yeah, it's... um. James says, call him in. Mm. Hey, James, you there? What's up, guys? Hey, how's it going? Uh, hey, good. Creepy hey, lighting there, buddy. Let me uh, mute the, the stream, because that might confuse me. It will, it will. Uh, <laughs> so, Doom Z. You guys hear about Doom Z? I did, yes, it looks uh, awesome. It's uh, Daisy remade in the Doom engine. Um, and it's very good slash terrible. Like if you've never played Doom, it's terrible. But if you miss the Doom aesthetic of like ten feet of visibility and hyper fast movement and everything, um, the movie gives me a headache. It really does. Sprites for everything. Uh, you might enjoy this. But it's pretty cool. Uh, you can see plenty of videos after our last problem with playing videos in the podcast. We're not going to show any of them to you. Uh, but yeah, this guy's trying to adapt Daisy's core gameplay into a 20 year old engine instead of the 10 year old engine they're currently using. Buzzing. Hey, hey, hey. Operation Flashpoint is 14 years old. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. But yeah, that's the thing. All right. And uh, as soon as my tab loads back, man, we're flying through the news tonight. We only have four news items. So if you guys have other news items you want us to make fun of, uh, let us know. But otherwise, uh, Rockstar has said the delay on Grand Theft Auto V for the PC is because they need to polish it more. Grand Theft Auto V was coming out uh, on the next-gen consoles, uh, what is it, November? Late October? I think it's late October. Um, November. 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 All right, so I was wrong. But... January 27th is when it comes out on the PC. Um, and a lot of people were kind of upset when they announced that because the implication when they announced stuff at E3 was that it was going to be out, you know, before then. I'll talk a little bit about the port delay. Sure. Because I really want to believe that this delay is, you know, truly for 
the benefit of PC gamers because the Max Paint 3 port was so good. That the PC version of Max Paint 3 was one of the best ports I think I've played from last gen. It was amazing. But then you go back a little bit further and you look at GTA 4 and the horrible mess that it still is on PC, also weighed down by the anchor that is games for Windows Live. I really can't figure out if this is is really just Rockstar wanting to make the best out of their best GTA so far, uh, make the best PC version possible, or if it's been put on the back burner and once again we're going to get a port that on a $2,000 computer runs at 24 FPS uh, on medium settings and it's just sluggish and, and a piece of junk. And I hope that's not going to be the case. No, I, I mean, if they're taking extra time, I would hope that it's better. I mean, it's... <sighs> Max Payne 3 worked really well. Like Max, I don't know if the same like if that was ported by the same the, people who the, doing this. The expectation wasn't there, like GTA. What do you? What wasn't there? The expectation. It is Max I mean, Payne. I mean, it's not it's not Grand Theft Auto, but it's a pretty big franchise. But knowing how that's GTA what the thing is. Out, there's a, I I really can't figure out which way I'm leaning because if like looking at Max Payne three is like oh that was an amazing port, GTA four that was one of the worst ports PC has seen in like the last ten years. I'm so confused. I'm a little confused. Like, I think uh, it could definitely be what thing uh, or they could have just said, oh, "Let's see all the assets in the game, and we'll figure out how to get it to work for the." I mean, I am super excited. I I miss playing it enough that I almost want to buy another copy, like for the 360, just so I can, you know, get my fix in for a couple months before it, it comes you out are for PC. Well, it was so much fun. Like I, it was. I, it, it really was. I I loved it. I want to go back to it. But I don't know the, the alias scene. The alias scene. Well, James, it's coming out for you then in November for your PlayStation Four. Are you planning on buying it on that? Depends on peer pressure. Oh, you know Joel's gonna do it, Mister Mister Hollywood. I think he had it on his PS3 and his Xbox 360 already. And I know he's gonna get it on the PC. So is he gonna go for the like all four bases there? I, I, mean, I wouldn't surprise me. I'm not going to live on it for my PS3 and Xbox also. Just so you can play with different people? Yeah. Yeah. That's normal. I have a news item actually to add to the end. Oh, do you? Add it in now. And uh, I, I really wish Joel were here for this because I, I jokingly said this last night as he signed on to TeamSpeak to rant about DayZ, a game in progress, as usual. Um, I'm going to call this news item Destiny. Bungie's, what could it be about? Bungie's lowest rated game of all time. I feel like we did this news item last week, Dave, because you kept throwing it in there when Joel was talking about how much he loves it. Did I? I don't yeah. think reviews were out. No, no, no. Reviews weren't out yet. It took days no. for reviews to come out. Oh. Oh, oh, you IG, mean officially IGN rated. It doesn't release theirs. We'll uh, talk about yeah. that in a second. <laughs> uh, most reviews actually still are not out because there was no pre-release copies. The servers didn't go up until the day of, of release. It's not that Destiny appears to be a bad game. It's just that, um, I mean, for a, for a Bungie game with a, what was it, $500 million budget? That uh, has to include marketing. That can't be just the development, can it? It, it does include marketing, yes. Okay, I was going to say, I, that's... I mean, they were doing, like, Times Square billboards and stuff for this. And it looks like they were really leaning towards the um, their, their own personal marketing versus worrying about reviews at all. Now that reviews are coming out, they're, they're generally pretty good. But... Um, actually, IGN James looks like uh, 85. Um, oh, they just released one? Uh, according to Metacritic, they did. Game Style 80, Spazio Games, what is that? 75. Uh, Game Informer gave it an 88. That's a respectable score. But um, user score is, is, well, forget user score on Metacritic. Those are worthless. <laughs> Let's just not even talk That's about it. That's all fanboys voting one direction or the other. I think, all, like, I bet there are no two, threes, and fours on Metacritic. That's got to, like, take up maybe 5% of the vote, and the rest is all ones and fives. Yeah, actually, on user reviews, it looks like it's mostly either tens or zeros. Yeah. So, oh, they, they do a 10-point scale. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought it was interesting because... Um, Wait what, you know, say, wait, what did you say Destiny got at IGN? Uh, Metacritic says... Oh, sorry, that's XGN. What is XGN? <laughs> IGN did release theirs. What is it? What did they give it? 7.8. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hey, they're not... That's for everyone who thinks IGN's just a shill. That's not a, that's not a shill score right there. 
No, not at all. Um, I, actually, I'm really wondering <laughs> if, if fear, pubs- they're, they're in fear <laughs> releasing their score. <laughs> I wonder how much of, of these reviews is uh, publishers saying, okay, I mean, sorry, not publishers, um, websites and game reviewers saying, okay, there's no pre-release, there's really no rat race to be the like day one review. Why don't we just take our time and really not give it any slack? I wonder how much of that's going on. Mm-hmm. Like, spend some some long time, maybe thirty hours in the game. Look at look at the end game stuff and and see what's there. That would have worked well that. for Battlefield Four reviews. I wish more people had held that off. I mean, they, they should they should have done that with Battlefield Four because Battlefield Four yeah. really is a multiplayer game. Like, it's it it's useless to release the single player review. I think because almost no one plays it or cares about it. I mean, a lot of people probably play. But it some works of it. really well. Yeah, it did. Um, but like, if they'd held off a couple days to release their reviews, they would have hit all of the huge multiplayer issues, and that game probably would have gotten the sevens it deserved. You know, sixes in some cases. <laughs> on, on PC, probably twos and threes. Seen for the first few weeks, it was like crashing to desktop completely. Yeah, but I mean, don't you think like I realize you want to get clicks, you got to drive people to your site. That's how they make money. You know, oh, screw them for wanting to have an income, but. Do you think for multiplayer, primarily multiplayer games, it should be standard practice to hold reviews for a couple days? I'd say a week would be a good a practice. A week and at least maybe, say, 15 hours in multiplayer, um, like multiple modes. And, and for Destiny, a lot of people are saying that um, there's a lot of grinding. So to really get into what you should score the game, you've got to like spend some serious time in the multiplayer. Well, uh, but even if it's got... like so. Where do you decide if you should hold the review or not? Like, for Battlefield, primarily multiplayer. Destiny, like, all multiplayer, pretty much. What about a game like The Last of Us that has a pretty good multiplayer component, but it's mm-hmm. mostly the single-player story? Should you hold that to see how multiplayer Honestly, holds up? I, I would vote to have companies start doing two reviews. Doing what? Ooh, that, that would yeah. make sense. I like that Especially a lot, Especially for actually. games like Battlefield. Oh, for multiplayer and for single player separately? Yeah, because like Call of Duty, yeah. I don't really play the multiplayer. I'll play the single player campaign and you know trade it in or whatever. So I don't care how the multiplayer affects the score. So I like that a lot, actually. Yeah. Um, the reason I, I wanted to add this as a news item is not just to stab Joel in the heart, but um, I thought it was just been very interesting on my Twitter feed. I have some people who are like Joel, and uh, they've been playing Destiny nonstop since it came out, and they can't get enough. I have other people who picked it up, played it for a few hours, said this is the most generic sci-fi thing I've ever played, and then like they've returned it already. In some cases, like I have some people on Twitter who have just taken it back already. Uh, it's just really interesting to see how divided people are on Destiny. Well, I think people wouldn't be so divided if um, it wasn't so hyped. Like, are you getting a next-gen console? Destiny's coming out. And then, yeah, as far as I too. can tell, and James, you're going to be getting your PS4 with Destiny soon, correct? Woo! Yes, tomorrow. I, I want to hear from you. Like, the hype train isn't on the podcast tonight, the Destiny hype train. I know he's <laughs> really enjoying it, but uh, I, I'd like I'd be curious Actually, to hear from you. kind of holding off, so we'll kind of have the same uh, okay. experience. Okay. Well, I want to hear if you think it's much different from Borderlands. Well, all right, so I'm confession time. I'm thinking I'm going to get a PS4 soon. Um, that is That did not sound like like what you just know. You need to very carefully enunciate PS4, please. What did it sound like I said? It sounded like you said PS4. It sounded exactly like PS4. Version 4! I thought, I thought you did say that, actually. I thought you were joking around being... No, no, I'm, I'm going to be getting a... PlayStation 4. <laughs> it sounded exactly like this. <laughs> I wish we could re- Andy, like, instant replay. Why would both like, of you yeah. assume that's what I meant? I'm like, is, that, is that like a, a PC Master Race joke or something? I don't understand. <laughs> the penis. No, that'd be the Potato 4. I'm thinking, of, oh, oh, from henceforth, it shall only be referred to as the Potato 4. Look, 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 at, look at the chat. <laughs> All right, yes, everyone's piling on to the penis. Um... <laughs> Please tell me that was intentional. Please. Yeah, of course that was intentional. <laughs> well, we have Joel on here sometimes, who Penis is the master is never an of accident. unintentional phrasing. Penis is never an accident. Um, <laughs> it's there where it <laughs> intends to be. I'm going to stop. So uh, I'm thinking about getting to Potato 4. Um, 
and I'm trying to decide, should I get the sweet white destiny bundle or just buy it like used for 320 bucks and buy games <laughs> separately? What do you, I mean, you gotta buy it off like <laughs> Amazon warehouse from Amazon warehouse. It's like three thirty. Um, Jeremiah, you can't ask me because my answer to everything is wait for the five dollars Steam sale because I'm a. Cheap they they don't have that for the Potato Four. Um, See, that's where you lose me. We <laughs> but, know there there are good games. Costco have, like, does a pretty good deal. Like, they're selling it like with an extra controller and a year of PlayStation Plus for like four fifty or something. Um, that's really good. Yeah, yeah, they they're selling Xbox Ones for like three seventy right now. Uh, cause Costco is the best, but, um, yeah, I don't know people in chat. Do you think I should buy <laughs> destiny or not? I'm not going to make this decision based on what you say, but I felt like I should reference you every once in a while. <laughs> You're just trying to, to quell the flow of penis chat going on right now. <laughs> cause there's a lot, <laughs> a lot of dicks in chat. A lot of dicks. <laughs> Ayo. All right, I feel like that joke's pretty much played itself out. Um, tonight's main topic, and this tonight's podcast... Wait, wait. Daisy News? There's a little bit of Daisy News? Oh, I thought we were just... Okay, we're going to do that. Um, Daisy has released another patch, which I don't feel a, like... A stable patch? Which I don't feel like really fixed anything, but I'm sure <laughs> there's some big differences, which Dave will tell us about now. <clears throat> yes. I am. <laughs> I don't know what kind of segue that was. Well, what? What are you? But, am I supposed um, to be pumped going into this? You saw how it went last night. <laughs> we all heard your tears, Jeremiah. They weren't tears; it, they were rage. It's okay. Not everyone can be good at the game. No, the server <laughs> we were on was was totally, totally broken. Both servers oh, yeah. we were on were terrible. And apparently, it was third, third one was a charm. Yeah, and did you hear James? I don't know if I said this to you today, but apparently, this entire. Uh, hosting providers whose servers are more or less worthless right now because of bad configurations. So they're actually saying, like, if you want to play 0.49, like, unstable right now, play on a multi-play server because they're at least configured correctly and don't have a tick rate of three. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's definitely some growing pains with the, the patch release. And honestly, for every stable patch that's come out, we should have known better than to try to play, what was it, three hours after it came out? That was probably our first mistake. It's like you get the the swarm of, of Steam player DDoSing the the hive anyway. Uh, the configuration was uh, anyway. It, it was it was broken. <laughs> After Jeremiah rage quit, James and I actually had a had a pretty good time because um, of the new temperature mechanic, which is finally balanced. You don't get hypothermia instantly anymore. You actually get wet and then cold and then freezing. And we spent how long was it, James? It was like well, an hour you're, looking you're, for matches. You're, miss, you're missing a period where. <laughs> Debbie ate a raw steak. <laughs> yeah, I, I really feel like the combination of, of the the new global loot system where there's less guns, less ammo, and less food spawning, along with like the new temperature stuff, really, it's starting to feel survivalist again. Uh, the hive wipe was needed. There's no longer an M4 on every corner. And yes, Debbie did horribly starve to death as we tried to revive her by force feeding her beans while she lay unconscious, then doing CPR. Which, and how do you do epithens. that? Like, think about the logistics of that for a realistic survival game. Are you just like shaking her esophagus to like get them down into her stomach? Are you chewing them up and spitting them in her mouth? Like, how are you getting beans into her stomach? I do it the bird method. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is in the apocalypse, if you were dying of starvation, how horrible would it be if like your friends trying to revive you or trying to like force feed you beans? So your body is literally just drained, you're dying of starvation, and as you're unconscious, you drown in beans. Like what a horrible death. Like you're not gonna be remembered in the in well, the Well just halls beans, you guys apocalypse. were force feeding her zucchini. Like no one wants to eat an entire zucchini. Not after she was unconscious. That was before that. There was a lot of zucchini force feeding before that, though. <laughs> it's like a little awkward. Cal and she yeah, still it's died. Like, it's like ten calories. It's, she um, died. She died because she ate raw meat. Yes. There's actually there's an entire video on my channel up about it. It was actually hilarious. She was two minutes away from a town full of canned food. No, uh, not only she ate one portion she ate a second portion too <laughs> yeah she ate like two raw steaks <laughs> yeah that, that bloody steak was pretty good um but yeah once james and i found an actual server it was really cool to not be worried so much about like oh i need i need a drum mag for my ak we were like hey it'd be cool if some of the some of the rifles we were carrying had ammo to match them and you know we should probably find some matches so we don't get complete yeah, hyperthermia we forever for uh, just a box of matches we had all oh. this stuff we had a cooking pot, we had a little gas pot, we didn't have any matches. 
<laughs> and then the Daisy gods laughed at us. This was so perfect. In uh, in Novi Sobor, Jeremiah, mm-hmm. after searching for, uh, counting the village where Debbie was still with us, almost two hours for matches, I finally found a box of matches in the police station, and it had a single match inside. <laughs> I was like, screw <laughs> you, Daisy. Oh, it got worse, though. It, it did? Do you remember what? you got hit by the zombie? You remember you hit remember. by the zombie to ruin the matches? Oh, that was actually before that. That's why we had to search for so long when we oh, had uh, Debbie with us was because I had a full box of Electro, but on the way to get cut up to you guys, a zombie like double hit me in the desync and Insta ruined my shirt. And, then and they, I, I guess in the desync, I would have been able to bring an epinephrine and a morphine to Debbie, and we might have been able to save her. <laughs> except I was in the corner of the medical building. A zombie hit me, and I couldn't get out of the corner, even though there were three feet of room on either side of the zombie, because the zombie was there, and the server decided, nope, you're screwed. So I got hit like five times and bled to death when I read out of the medical center. <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead. Tell us about the awesome changes that have come to Daisy point four nine. Well, I, I have yeah. to say before before you list them all, I'm torn between the two. Like I love searching through houses and just finding just a whole bunch yeah, of crap yeah. to the point where I'm always doing inventory management. That's fun to me. Mm-hmm, but it was I agree. also it was also fun running around in the you know the the big puffy coat. You know, you see the breath a little bit like heavier than normal because it's cold outside and you you know you're worried about hypothermia so we have a we actually have a goal our goal is to find stuff to make a fire so we can yeah you know, I, I like goals like that that was pretty cool it's and everything it that's like, broken that pisses me off <laughs> and, yeah yeah and find you know when i actually found a gun it was a lot more exciting than you know just finding you know oh another sks oh do i want the most in the sks it was just like Oh, a gun! A gun. Oh, I don't care. I gotta find a bullet now. I, I'm pretty sure that when James uh, he had found a blaze and like one speed loader for it, and he had an empty um, the break action hunting pistol that takes the Mosin ammo too. Mm-hmm. He, he had those, and then I found a box of 20 rounds of Mosin ammo. I think he peed himself. <laughs> like <laughs> my first really gun, my deal. first gun though that I found was the uh, was the shotgun. Oh yeah, <laughs> and the, like. I found it and I have all this ammo. I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. Server restart. <laughs> I go back in. I've still got the crossbow that I had, and the crossbow is also sitting on the ground. Oh, so <laughs> because persistence didn't because of persistence when he, when he picked the shotgun up, it lost it on his player data, but it duped the crossbow onto the ground. So it was just like sitting there on the floor mocking him. Like, remember that shotgun that was here before? Look, it's your empty crossbow. <laughs> um. Yeah, and, and Ice Man, I, I see you, you talking a little bit about the, the loot, and uh, I mean, it's been fun to ha- constantly have good guns and have like four pistols and stuff like that, but at the same time, that's not what they're intending for DayZ. And I'm sure there'll be, there'll be like a private hives you could go to, just like in the mod, once modding comes out, where you'll be able to say like, I want like guns spawning in barns nonstop and stuff like that. But for the core DayZ experience, I really feel like they are on track. For, uh, for really balancing the loot spawns and making it into true survivalism. Like, I, I'm just really, really happy with that direction. If they could just get the core functions to stop falling apart every time there's an update, <laughs> that would be great. Well, when the game, when Standalone first came out, it was cool because they were releasing like a patch a week or a patch every two weeks. And we were super excited, like, wow, they're just adding more and more stuff. And then it just, it feels like every time now, the updates are just really going downhill in quality. And I understand they're in alpha, like we don't need to have the whole disclaimer thing. But it does seem like the quality of the updates they're releasing is going down, and the player base of the game is going down. The number of concurrent users has fallen off a lot since earlier this year. And I think it's probably Mm -hmm. because hacking is rampant, Um, dickish players are rampant, and the oh, game doesn't work very well right now, and all y'all's video went away for some reason. Yeah, Skype, you suck. But yeah, um, so it, like, what's actually, going on I, there? I, I had a discussion, Jeremiah, on Reddit with somebody about that exact topic: the drop in player, uh, concurrent players playing DayZ, and I, I agree. It's partially due to the, some rough patches, especially in the last month and a half patches have been rough and partially because of hacking being i mean that's just really discouraging in daisy but at the same time i was showing joel uh armor 3 experienced the exact same thing where when the alpha first came out the player base was huge and then it dropped a ton by late alpha like almost i i stopped playing it by late alpha i was just waiting for content to come out 
And then once Armor 3 actually launched, I slowly started playing more and more and more. So it's like almost like a you know a cross section of a skate ramp as far as as players go. And I would really expect the same thing as far as concurrent players go for DayZ. Um, as patches improve, as more features come out, as we get closer to beta, it's going to go back up. I don't think it's, it's like a, a shocking thing to see that it's gone down. I, I think when they throw vehicles in, you'll see a big spike. Yeah, you know, I was talking to a little while. I was talking to, to Joel about that. Actually, James, I'm betting that there'll be like a, a medium-sized spike for vehicles that'll drop off pretty quickly because it's, it's going to be like you know one or two vehicles at first, and they are going to be pretty rare. I'm betting the big spike that keeps growing is going to be around the end of the year when the new renderer comes in with the new UI, and uh, that's going to increase frame rate and the game's going to look better. I think that's where people are going to start coming back and like keep coming back is around that time. That's my guess. I mean, I can say, and uh, I don't want to be like too. I, I don't want to be too negative. I know I was frustrated last night, and we can talk about it. <laughs> but honestly, right now, I do not want to play the game, and it's not a. I'm never coming back to it. It's not like Battlefield Four. I still think the core gameplay is fun. Hey, is my video back on? Yeah, your video is back on. But right click, now, look at the bottom. Bring your video on. I do not want to play this game at the moment. Like I, and I don't. I, I don't. I'm like I'm not trying to be mean. Um, but, I mean, back me up, Dave. Well, maybe you're not the right person to back me up on this. Back me up on it's frustrating right <laughs> no, now. No, no, I actually, I'll, I'll back you up because, um, breaks, especially when you're playing a piece of software that's not only not finished yet, but at, at periods of its development, it's going to be more broken than it was earlier. I mean, it's, it's going to, it's going to come and go. Um, uh, you know, I, I've been talking to Joel since our Novo event in DayZ. I've only played two or three times in very short play sessions. Like I played what two hours with James on Saturday, James. It was it was very short like session uh, because I don't want to get burned out on the rough state of the game before it's finished. Um, and that's why I'm coming back. And I'm definitely playing experimental when it comes out, and you know, running around and checking out new stuff. But that's just briefly. I'm not I'm not getting in there building a campsite and really playing Daisy as I would uh, as I would call myself playing it. Like. I'm not getting into it like I can. <laughs> I, I wonder, though, if, if early access, and this is going back to the early access thing, I wonder if that hurts games in the long run. Uh, the developers <laughs> say it doesn't, but, but our but most early still access still games... Kind of thing. Yeah, but our early access so games, works. are they? is it designed to be early access for a year and a half like DayZ probably is going to be, or should early access be a couple months, you know? Armor 3's early access was uh, was pretty short. It was from uh, mid-March to, what, mid-September? Yeah, and I felt like that was pretty good. Also, Armor 3 was pretty much feature complete when it hit early access, which was a big difference. I'm going to disagree there. Armor 3 was very stable at launch, but it was very bare bones. I mean, there was no campaign. There was no... Well, no, 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 no. Arma, well, I'm saying early access was like they didn't add tons of features during early access. They were just polishing it during early access. The campaign and stuff came after release. There was a good amount of content, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the campaign and stuff came after release, which I also think is a weird thing to do. But they've done that with their other Arma games. So I guess it's, you know, it's not out of character for Bohemia. It would be like if DayZ was released, say the, the, the shape that DayZ is probably going to be in at the start of next year, one year after it's, it went early access. If that had been the first time early access came out, like that might have been better because the game is completely different than it was when it came out last December. <laughs> yeah, I mean is. it's totally different, and uh, I don't know. I, I I feel like early access has been done a lot better than Daisy has been, just because it was so early. But I understand from their point of view, they had to get something out because people were going to start losing interest. Um, they'd already gone over when they were th wanted to release it by one year. So what are they going to do? Wait another year? Like, you can't really you know, go two years from announcing you're going to have something out soon to actually having it out. There's not many people who are going to stick around for new IP like that. It, it's, it is rough because they did announce originally December 2012 for the repackaged version of the mod. And then it was uh, all of 2013 was the alpha is almost ready. It's coming soon. Just a little bit more, you know, polishing. But uh, looking at, at their 2.5 plus billion sales, I feel like if they had some sort of big meeting and they just like locked it down and said, guys, let's, let's just add tons of features. Let's have an entire another year of development before we launch alpha. And they launched in December, 2014. I would bet it would be an almost unnoticeable hit, uh, on the total sales. And I would bet the hype train would have been ridiculous once it came out. 
Yeah, because I mean, like we were, we talked about before it came out. Are people still going to play this game because it's been so long? <laughs> yeah, I remember that. And plenty of people did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, would it, would it really have mattered? Who knows? But and I'm sure the game is going to end up being pretty good. But it isn't right now. Well, in that regard, do you think H1Z1 like pushing back their early access Ooh. is a good thing? I'm glad you brought that up, James, because I actually uh, saw a quote from, I think it was Clegg's, one of the developers, about um, you know why they pushed H1Z1 back so far when DayZ launched really so early in Alpha. And he had an interesting point about DayZ that I, I thought was, was really interesting. He said basically because DayZ was first and has a very established player base and is the biggest and also has a very unique style to it, like it's definitely the, the more like simulator focus, like more, it has that, that kind of grounded feel to it. He's like, there's a lot of people who, because Daisy is so big and was first, would f forgive it easier and and come back to it faster. Mm -hmm. Definitely and, true. And, you know, like even if you play Daisy right now on the desync broken non multiplayer servers and you hated the experience, you uninstalled it, but maybe like six months from now, you hear about like look at all these awesome vehicles. You like see a YouTube video and you come back in, and if if it was actually good, you'd remember all that fun you had before. You'd, you'd come back. But H1Z1, their first impression being like maybe the sixth or seventh survival style game, larger one that's that's come out, they have to nail that first impression, and that's what he was talking about. And uh, I'm kind of thinking about that. That's a, a really good point. They're not going to have the forgiveness that Daisy has had. I don't think. Yeah. Oh, well, definitely I wonder, not. I wonder if Daisy is kind of their their checklist of what not to do. I it mean, would be a good idea to look at it. <laughs> I mean, if they're if they're looking at you know make sure their servers can handle the you know the desyncing issues and but SOE already has a lot of that covered. Like their mostly their big thing is is trying to have their idea be good enough. I think they've got the resources, they've got the back end, or at least they have a history of having the back end. Maybe they have screwed it up for this game, but historically they've done a pretty good job at the stuff that DayZ is actually having the most trouble with. Mm -hmm. Most of the stuff DayZ has trouble with, other games never do. Like I, I know I laugh about it a lot, but like mo most other games, jumping just works. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of the yeah, opening true. doors just works. Climbing ladders, yeah, like you yeah, never yeah. think about that in other games. It's only Bohemia games that have those issues. So, it's because DayZ is having to like deconstruct and then reconstruct, whereas H1Z1, they have you know this very new engine. They start at the foundation and just build their new stuff on top of that. They're not having to, to you know but, take it apart. But <laughs> DayZ also had that option too. They had that option. Yeah, they, if they held off on their release, they could have started building on the Arma 3 engine. True. I feel like they, they went with the engine they went with because that was what was available and they didn't want to pay to like license something else. But as the scope of the project grew, I think no, I'm, I'm hindsight being 2020, 20, they would have been... Well, yeah, I'm they should have started with Arma 3. Arma 3 yeah, they, they, like if hindsight being 2020, maybe they should have just started from that since they did start working on it and then pretty much throw it all away and start over again. Um, the only downside to that would have been that they would have had to wait until roughly September or October of last year to really start working on the on the alpha, which means that we'd be seeing that initial very bare bones launch around this time, which would then no, mean I wouldn't say that because the Arma three that. engine must be have been pretty solid for at least six months before its early access came out because they were adding features and stuff to it. A lot of the legacy stuff is still there in Armor 3, the stuff that, that the DayZ team has, has gone and, and changed, like the server backend, everyone forgets that you know, that was last year, that was a lot of, of, of backend work. Um, that was a, a huge part of last year's work was, was the server client architecture, and but that would have still... But you're still working on two games at once and not working on one and then working on a different one with a different team with a different set of rules and then trying to figure out how to eventually migrate. You know I don't think Armor 3, in, in the end, would have saved any time at all. I, I really don't. Um, well, it would not, not time. It would have saved player frustration, maybe. <laughs> that's true. I'll agree with that. Yeah. Although Armor but 3 it, is still not like super smooth when it comes to like doors and ladders. And other stuff. And it's a lot better, too, though. Is, it's a lot it, better. It, like when you switch weapons, it does just switch weapons. Mm -hmm. When you get in vehicles, it does just get in vehicles. Like it doesn't have a lot of those issues, but... You can still draw a very uh, easy parallels between Arma 3's post-launch patch history and like uh, Daisy's development. Uh, they're doing a lot of the same kind of work, trying to bring Arma 3 even still up to date. And I'm just glad that Bohemia is now flush with cash to really put some real effort into getting some polish going here. But and it, it can license an engine. 
it, it has well, to be a hit though. That's Daisy's already sold two and a half million. How high is it going to go? You know, is this the type of game that can do ten million, or is it going to cap at like three lifetime? Well, what, that's the whole point of putting it on console is they've widened their base. Hopefully, but how much money is that going to cost them, and how much like how much longer is that going to take? Like, how long will this amount of money last them? You know, they keep hiring more people. That's really going to cut into their yearly budget. Um, like. They're on borrowed time a little bit to make this game a hit. And unfortunately, when studios don't have a lot of money and are on borrowed time, the games normally don't end up that well. I mean, I hope it's different with this one. But even if it wasn't, I've gotten enough enjoyment out of DayZ. I couldn't be mad. Like, I'd be disappointed. But hmm. it's not like I'm going to be like, oh, man, you know, out of the grand total of, I guess it's been 40 bucks I've spent on Arma 2 and DayZ together. You know, that 40 bucks sure wasn't worth the 600 hours <laughs> I've put into it, you know. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah. Although you know, if they pull even pull the plug now, it would still get made by somebody else. Yeah, I guess someone like the the modding community would still <laughs> find a way. Well, I mean, the modding community has been hard at work on the Arma Two mod. I've told Dave this: the Arma Two mod, or Daisy mod, actually runs really well. I played it about a month ago. Um, hot bars or not hot bar? It doesn't have a hot bar, but like the quick switching works. Inventory is instantaneous. The zombie like AI in general is still broken, but um, I mean it, it's the same broken it's always been. It's not inconsistent. You can still hit them and they die, which is nice. Um, like except for the if you can hit them, <laughs> all the features that are missing from the mod because it's the mod. Like yeah, the standalones added a lot of nice features, but all the features that are in the mod actually work really well for the most part, and it's a very smooth, stable experience. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's just that the mod is never going to grow to be what right. was it what is it, what is it, it was intended to be. It's just um, you can only use so much with scripts on top of Armor Two, and uh, it was never going to be what they wanted it to be. All right, so uh, Dave, you skipped time codes. Yeah, I'm, I'm going back. Don't worry about it. Okay, it's all good. I, I hate like I feel like a jerk every time I fuss at you about that. Like I'm not actually fussing at you. I'm just no. I actually realized my timer was off, so I just stopped caring. I'm yeah, sorry. Back. I don't really care. Um, I mean, I, I care that you're doing it, but like I don't, you know. That's it's not how big... it is. <laughs> all right, it's time for the main topic. We actually don't have any mail this week. It's the first time in a couple months. Um, our main topic That's my tonight mail. is Mojang has sold to Microsoft for two and a half billion dollars. Two and a half billion with a B dollars. Um, so I've got some strong opinions about this, but what do you guys think? I think that I have no strong opinions about this, but I am amazed that Minecraft has apparently sold like, what is it? 60 million copies oh it's it's more? yeah it, it's monstrous or, um or is it 100 million copies now no, i don't think it's 100 i think it's no. it's in the mid zero to 100 range like it's more 50 than or 60 million yeah. yeah probably more than wow um but here's the statement that they released oh benjamatic in chat let us know why your brother uh lost his job i'm actually i'm very curious to hear about that um so they, they released a statement, Owen Hill, um, who actually used to work for PC Gamer, used to be their web editor, uh, <laughs> it works now at Mojang, and he said, Minecraft has grown from a simple game to a project of monumental significance. Though we're massively proud of what Minecraft has become, it was never Notch's intention for it to get this big. Which is true, it was released as like a dumpy little, like, hey, here's my Legos rip-off game, see what you think. Um, what, as you what might argue... Voice? What? What was that voice? What voice? You're like, hey guys, da 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 da. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't even you thinking. You're reading with a weird voice. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. As you <laughs> might already know, Notch is the creator of Minecraft and the majority shareholder at Mojang. He's decided he doesn't want the responsibility of owning a company of such global significance. Over the past few years, he's made attempts to work on smaller projects, but the pressure of owning Minecraft became too much for him to handle. The only option was to sell Mojang. He'll continue to do cool stuff, though. Don't worry about that. Uh, there are only a handful of potential buyers with the resources to grow Minecraft on a scale that it deserves. We've worked closely with Microsoft since 2012, when it came to the Xbox 360, and have been impressed by their continued dedication to our game and its development, and we're confident that Minecraft will continue to grow in an awesome way. Um, what does scale that is or deserves mean? I mean, that means like a big company DLC. would have a big company <laughs> would have to buy it. So many people play it, like their server backend and stuff has to be massive. Like not just anyone can buy them; it has to be someone like EA or 
Activision or Sony or Microsoft. It's got to be one of the huge players um, in the in video games. Like no one else is going to have the resources to keep the game running and to continue developing it. So, I mean, what do you guys think about the sale? Part of me doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of care. <laughs> kind of where I am. I I I was curious reading Notch's statement. It sounded like he came to that final decision to sell. Like in just in the last few weeks after that. Uh, end user license agreement thing where apparently his team working on Minecraft had changed the license agreement without his knowledge because he's not the lead dev on Minecraft anymore and then he was like dragged into this huge internet fight over it and he had no idea what was going on and that, I think what he was saying was like that's when he decided that it's just time to get out um, get out and go buy an island yeah I mean to, to me I can definitely understand looking at, at how some game developers have been thrown into the spotlight without ever really wanting that and the crap they have to deal with. I, I can see, and Notch. Yeah, I, I can see where he's coming from, but that seems really, really rash to me. Like maybe in two or three weeks deciding I'm going to leave everything behind. I'm just tired of it all. That's that's pretty extreme. Um, It would be really easy to pick on notch because he's very publicly shamed other companies who've sold out um <laughs> like oculus although he was mostly mad at them because they were kickstarted and then sold out but he's always been very much like don't sell out to the man be strong be independent and he makes lots of snarky comments um but he did release a statement that made me respect him a little bit more after the whole sale thing was announced he said hey i'm just a coder guys like i just want to make games <laughs> i mean I, you know i don't like I never wanted to be the CEO of a big company. I still don't want to be the CEO of a big company. And that makes me understand like, yeah, I can see why he'd be upset at people for like selling out other things. And it's easy to poke at him because he really did the same thing. But how else do you get out of it? I mean, it'd be stupid of him to give it away. Like that's no, and, yeah. and, and Mojang couldn't, they just couldn't do that. And this two and a half billion dollars, not sure how much of that he gets, but that will, that'll be enough to fund his next 30 projects, you know? He can go back to doing what he wants to do. He probably will never make another Minecraft. He said he never expects to have a hit on the level of Minecraft. I mean, most video game developers never have a hit like Minecraft, so <laughs> that's pretty reasonable. Um, yeah, he's yeah. not expecting lightning to most strike twice. Most AAA don't have hits yeah, like Minecraft. Yeah, like no, no one has hits like Minecraft, really. <laughs> I mean, Grand Theft Auto is a hit like Minecraft. Like, World of Warcraft is a hit like Minecraft. Like, the list is pretty small. Um, yeah. So... It's reasonable for him to want to get some money out of it. Minecraft's probably worth that much. Supposedly, Microsoft said they're going to make this much money back by sometime next year. Um, man. But, man, $2.5 billion brings me back to we were talking when Oculus sold out. Like, no one should get on their high horse and be like, oh, how dare they? Yeah, man, $2.5 billion. Like, there isn't much I wouldn't sell you for $2.5 billion. <laughs> Never want me to take a picture again? Done. Never want me to play a PC game again? Like, I'll miss you guys, but two and a half billion dollars. I mean, back Podcast me up here. over. The list of things <laughs> I wouldn't... actually have real life experiences. Yeah, yeah. the list of things games. I wouldn't do for two and a half billion dollars, that's a small list. Like, you can't kill me for two and a half billion dollars, and you can't... We well, can't kill anybody for two and a half billion dollars. The list mostly stops after that. Like, <laughs> all, all I'm hearing during my is, I do things. <laughs> I do a lot of things. <laughs> No limits for two and a half billion dollars. I mean, I'm a little dis I'm a little disappointed that it's Microsoft. Why? In that, are they going to close is... it? Are they going to close it down to, to Sony? And that's the, a lot of people are worried about that because right now it's on the PC, Mac, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PS3, PS4, Vita, iOS, and Android. Yeah. So yeah. it's not on Windows Phone though. So I guess that could happen, but. Yeah, I, I don't see it as like a huge news item. I, I mean, as, as like a main topic. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I'm, a big I'm news item. About, it, okay, let me rephrase that. It's, it is a huge news item, but I don't think like after a few weeks, it's not going to affect anybody. It's not going to. I don't think it's going to change much. I don't think Microsoft's going to do a lot with Minecraft right now. I don't see it disappearing from Sony platforms or, or from PC. I'm not sure where they're going with it next, but um, I, I mean, they might just be like looking a, at it as a source of revenue. Like yeah. if they're if they're gonna make this money back each year, let's say maybe they make two billion a year from Minecraft. Think how many hits they'd have to have to More make two billion Xbox. a year. 
like it, it's worth it to them i think to keep it on all those platforms like the way minecraft is it's the rare game that can really run pretty well on anything like it'll probably be on smartwatches sooner or later it behooves them i think to put it on every platform they possibly can just to rake yeah. in the money because they could yeah. i mean that's like having five <laughs> major hits every single year probably you know Actually, yeah think that nintendo would have been a good buyer of that because they could use the do you think oh, nintendo has the, uh, do you think they yeah. have the scope though no, no, but <laughs> that would fit their theme though. Like, I I feel like I could really see Minecraft with a Nintendo like logo on it, and just it, it feels like that would fit for some reason. Maybe Zelda and its blockiness. I don't know. <laughs> it does seem like a very Nintendo game. The it playfulness really well on the on the gamepad. Actually, it's it's not on any Nintendo systems, is it? No. Huh. Oh wow. I don't know so. if this is going to make it more likely to come out on Nintendo systems, but yeah, the gamepad would be perfect for it. Um, and it works really well with those, you know, I bet it's 60 FPS locked 1080p on a Wii U. Um, yeah, I, I agree with Dave. Like, it's a big news story because it's one of those scrappy upstart game developers that kind of <laughs> took over the world and then made a ton of money. It's a big like deal. Like, he's going to buy his island now. <laughs> yeah, when the man buys them and it doesn't get much more of the man than Microsoft. <laughs> I know. Uh, but, yeah, it's probably not really going to be that big of a difference. Like, it's not... Again, it'd be stupid for Microsoft to make it Xbox exclusive. Like, people have been saying in chat, people have been saying all over the news... You know, maybe there'll be an Xbox uh, Minecraft Two that's an Xbox exclusive, or maybe there'll be DLC that's just for Xbox. You know, there's going to be DLC, I'm sure. Oh but, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. you know, there'll be tons of stuff probably they'll do to make their version better, but it's probably now, not did, really going to mess the game up. They buy the company like they bought Rare in the past, like where they still maintain their own identity. Uh, uh Mojang is maintaining its own, okay. I think, branding still. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that worked out but, so well for Rare. <laughs> and and Westwood Studios, oh, Forever yes, Bitter. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Let's get angry. Let's get angry. <laughs> Dice. <laughs> now we're look, all just sad. <laughs> look, Jeremiah. EA did not take away Dice's name. They just ruined it for them. <laughs> right, exactly. That's what we're talking about. Like Rare. Rare still existed. Uh, well, and Westwood Studios does not exist anymore. Yeah, that's true. But I, I'd say, like, what's happening to DICE is kind of what happened to Rare. Rare was, like, super respected. Like, mm -hmm. these are the guys for competitive <laughs> first-person shooters. And then they became the guys who make garbage. Um, and I'm not saying that's what's happening with DICE, but mm. I'm kind of saying that. Uh, another person weighed in on that. Rust, which is the game that's basically Daisy crossed with Minecraft... Um, says he would do the exact same thing if he was in the same position, which I don't know if it's like some veiled, please, please buy me. You know, like <laughs> he's, he's gone through so many issues with rust. Maybe he'd be like, just give me 30 million. I'm out 30 million. I'm gone. Yeah, well, but I, I feel like he could just retire right now on his $5 Gary's mod sales and like live for the rest of his life just off of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which by the way, Gary's mod has sold 6 million copies. I, I mean, that's, that's amazing. That's, that's awesome. But yeah, I mean, it's uh, probably most indie developers, it's only a big deal that the guy from who makes Rust said it, um, Gary Newman, it's only a big deal he said it probably because Rust is decently popular and a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, it's in a similar vein. But probably every single indie developer is like, hey, you want to buy my game for a couple billion dollars? Yeah, I'll sell. <laughs> <laughs> that, yep. le that level of integrity will go right out the door and then I'll just make all the games I've always wanted to make but have never been able to. I bet you... Dean that would sell. I bet. Yeah, I was. I bet Dean would sell in a heartbeat. Oh yeah, because he's already he very publicly said a lot of things to make it obvious that he's gotten enough abuse and he's kind of ready to do his next project. You know, he's committed. Exactly. He's staying on board to finish it, but you know, his heart is leaving a little bit. Just, and I'm sure it's partly because of all the abuse he's had to deal with as being a guy who likes making games, a guy who likes doing code, who suddenly gets thrust into the spotlight <laughs> and now like has the eyes of the internet watching him. You know, that's well, Dean's, Dean's publicly said, too, that he was very careful when he signed when he sold the Daisy name, which is now owned by Bohemia. And he signed his contract personally with Bohemia Interactive, that his contract had a very solid expiration date. His contract is up in December. He said, I'm staying on with Daisy until they don't need me anymore. But he wanted that like definitive. I can escape from this point on uh, in his contract. <laughs> well, it's December. You don't need me anymore. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. De- December twenty fifth. Uh, bye. I'm not coming back after Christmas. <laughs> I, I mean, that would Standard yeah. Vacation. <laughs> Dean's like cleared out his desk before Christmas break. <laughs> what what you doing there, Dean? <laughs> just taking just taking box. some stuff home. <laughs> 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 it's happening. New Zealand. I'm coming home to you. That was awful. I'm terrible at doing accents. I'm that sorry. That was really awful. I know. That that, that was like. I'm sorry. It, it was leaning towards Australia, but like well, that's a little bit offensive. Right. It's, it's leaning towards Australia. Ooh. What? <laughs> it is. They're like right next door and they sound pretty similar. Do it again. No, I don't think I, I don't think I could actually do it again. Like it's just, it comes and it goes. I'm going to kind of break the American stereotype here and say that I actually think Australian and New Zealand accents sound pretty noticeably different. Like maybe not at first, but I can tell a difference, but there's, it's, it's a like, definite difference. I guess it's like it's, saying Irish people and English people sound different. They do, but there's a lot of similarities there. It's a huge difference. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, <laughs> evidently I'm just wrong, guys. I'll stop now. Irish and British? What Maybe is... like Irish and Scottish can have some similarities. All right. Like Obviously crazy. this was a mistake. I regret everything. Let's move on. <laughs> you should. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, well, I mean, that's like <laughs> for our British listeners. <laughs> do you guys have anything more to say about that? A walrus nope. nipple says, say go, my name. I go back to my, I don't care. Walrus nipple? I don't know. <laughs> that's not even, I'm Thanks. bad at this. <sighs> Sorry. What thing, James? I said, I go back to my, I don't care. Mm. Really? That's it. <laughs> we should just end the podcast right there. James, I don't Dave, care. I almost had something, um, I almost had funny, something funny to scare you, you with. You almost had funny, like in, in your grasp, was so close. A, a news item, it says, Road Redemption, roars onto Steam Early Access. And for a second, I read it as Red Dead Redemption. I was like, what? <laughs> Road Redemption, <laughs> what, what it's a spiritual... Early su- access? What kind of terrible port would that be? Well, it's a spiritual successor to um, Road Rash which was like the Sega Genesis game where you beat people with chains while riding on motorbikes. Pretty fun game. I'm just going to start calling Red Dead Redemption uh, the game that is the reason I'm going to buy a $20 Xbox 360 off of Craigslist in a few years. I'd say that's worth it. Yep. Just borrow Joel's from him. He probably doesn't even use it anymore. Uh, I think I told James that today, or my plan is to wait until Joel's is like covered in dust and then just like just take it. ask for it. I mean, just, just, that's right. Just you ask watch for it. out. He might trade. He trades in stuff on a whim, though. That's true. Joel so, and his games. <laughs> I've never seen anybody so excited about GameStop and Best Buy credit as Joel is. Like he is, he is the corporate dream. <laughs> like, I get how much store credit? <laughs> yeah, he's explained to me. He's like, no, guys, when you bring stuff in, you can just put it towards the thing you want. I was like, yeah, I can also sell it and put the money towards anything I want. That's how money works. <laughs> <laughs> but you get a car. <laughs> I'm part of the team. <laughs> no, any any day that I can avoid going to GameStop is a good day. I don't think I've been in a GameStop in like well over a year because it's just so aggravating. Like it used to be that they really knew what they were talking about and you could talk tech and games and stuff. Well, now it's just like, would you like to pre-order? Would you like to pre-order anything? Would you like to sign up for GameStop rewards? Would you like to get in the game or whatever their motto is? It's like, no, no, I, I just wanted this used game. Just just this one. That's all I. That's all I wanted. I'm sorry oh, that I you're saw, not being paid well, but I can't help it. <laughs> I saw a post, I think it was on Reddit, of someone who had gone to GameStop for the first time in like six years. I think they were getting Destiny, actually. And besides the game itself, like the guy was trying to sell him like all these user guides and like there was like a poster you could get and like uh, you could like pre-order the DLC coming up for it. Like you, like, you want the premium add-on, you know, you can get a GameStop card and get 10% of that, off of that today. And we have, we have the strategy guide and we have, you know, the poster set. And he said that like, and he's like, and don't forget about these upcoming new releases for PS4. And he's like, the more I shook my head, like the sadder and sadder the guy got, but he never stopped. He just kept going and just getting sadder and sadder and sadder as he went it was like a good five minute spiel before he was able to pay for his copy of destiny <laughs> the way to cure all that when you go into GameStop is to take your young children with you Ooh, very and nice they start acting uh bat beep crazy <laughs> they try they stop handing you stuff and they stop asking you if you'd like to you know know about like, the latest latest Z- 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 look, I have money all my money goes to these two <laughs> <laughs> I, I, my hands are full do you think I have a 
please yeah. put this flyer. I like walking into Best Buy now because I'm just like, no, no, no. Just trust me. Like, you're not going to want to have this discussion. Like, please don't explain to me why, you know, this thing is better than this thing because I'm going to explain to you why you're wrong. Let's just get this over with. Like, I heard someone no, in Best I Buy. Not, no, I do not want my game, in st- game installed <laughs> by... <laughs> <laughs> for eighty dollars, your house. W- would you like a um? W- would you like an a hundred dollar extended warranty on that disc in case something happens to it? <laughs> so uh, Joel just messaged me and said, "Add him to the conversation." Do we feel like fighting tonight? <laughs> yes. Okay. Who's ready to argue? I uh, am. But but but. All right. Let me throw up the splash screen. Up oh, OBS is like freezing. This is fantastic. All the technology. <laughs> oh, I got, I got a text, too. I just noticed it. Okay. All right. I'll add him in. I'm the he better He really friend. wants to be on the podcast. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, Joel. <Who's> there? <laughs> so, Joel, I'm thinking I'm going to get a, um, a PS4. But I'm, Yay! But I'm on the fence about whether uh, I wait, should wait, get Wait, wait, wait. What are you, what are you buying? Tell them oh no! Really sorry. Oh, I said it wrong. Oh, henceforth on the podcast, it is referred to as the Potato Four. Uh, <laughs> but I'm thinking about getting a Potato Four. But I don't know if I should get Destiny or not. Oh, okay. How come? I mean, I mean, what, I mean, what are you getting a PS4 right now for, anyways? To to play with you guys, Joel. What does your shirt say? People in chat want to know. I, I don't even <laughs> want to explain it. I was, <laughs> okay. Okay, so my wife stand up, stand up, stand up. Man, <laughs> here you go. Look. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, what I learned, what I learned is that this little sign right here actually makes it more of the male version. That's it, it, not, not the correct. That's not the correct way. <laughs> so when did John graduate? <laughs> Back That's in 2000. <laughs> No, uh, so wait, Joy didn't even know that either. Okay, a lot of people didn't know that. I, 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 I wouldn't have known. <laughs> a well, lot anyways, of people don't know. Okay, well, the best part is, you know, I've had the search for years now. She graduated in two thousand nine, and I, I was out running. Like, it was like a year later after that. I was just running down. And people were like, "Oh, congratulations, man!" And I was just like, "Oh man, they're really nice." I'm like running. And they're like, "Congratulations on running." <laughs> And then, and then, like it took me a while to like, oh, I'm wearing this shirt, you know. And then some guy was like, I'm pretty sure you're meeting Everybody's your running wife, right. but just in case. Everybody's walk, walking by, say, hey, way to go, man. <laughs> <laughs> way to be open. Be, be true to yourself, <laughs> as Joel always is. <laughs> so Joel, um, that's what I'm on the fence about. It's like I kind of want to get an, uh, a PS4. There's plenty of games to play on it. Well, there's some games to play on it, and I'd probably just get <laughs> PlayStation Plus, really, and just play the stuff that pops up on that. But should I get Destiny and play it with you guys? Is it really that fun? Um, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. How does like, it compare to, like, it's, it's Borderlands? Taking, taking... Okay, um, I mean, honestly, I haven't played that much. Like, I played more in the alpha and the beta than I have played the standalone because I'm just trying to wait for James to get his so that we can play together, you know? Um... It's honestly, I mean, like the controls are just awesome. They're just really, really good. So I, it's it's one of those things where it, it, yeah, it is it is really repetitive. Like it's just like, okay, over here, do a little, you scan something real quick, then you wait for a while, shoot stuff. The next mission, scan something, collect different items, it's shoot a boring stuff. Boring way to describe every game. Uh, you just shoot but, stuff. I mean, you move but, around later. Yeah, you shoot exactly, other but stuff. I mean, it's not really that different from Daisy, where you spawn in, you look for loot, then you shoot stuff, then you die. Spawn in, you loot for stuff, you shoot people, and you die. But I'm like, it's just fun. I mean, the mechanics are really well made. So, so uh, Joel, did you uh, have anything you wanted to talk about as the podcast winds down today? Oh, I got a comment of the week for Joel to read in his usual fun voices. Can you get the Google Google Doc up, Joel, uh, yeah. to read the comment? Yeah, I can get it up. It's the first comment, <laughs> and then I'll explain the second. <laughs> What, what did I miss here? <laughs> that was actually a pretty quick thought of yours. He said, yeah, I can get it up. <laughs> <laughs> and then he immediately laughed. <laughs> so is it still a journalism if like, I, I, I get it really quick? <laughs> <laughs> so the definition of journalism is when Joel doesn't understand that he's saying crazy things? Is that... <laughs> 
but it takes him a while, or someone has to like point it out to him. Right, like, hey, right Joel, here. that's not what that means. <laughs> Joel, you're not allowed to. We don't say. We don't say that. <laughs> yeah, you, you you can't say that, Joel. Oh man. Okay, let's see. Comments of the week. Yeah, it's, it's the first one. Oh, this is the part of the podcast where Dave heads out into the woods with an axe and cuts <laughs> down a tree and looks for the ones with the nice rotten centers to bring back some of that pulpy, pulpy uh, meat for us to chew on. YouTube comment meat. And to preface this comment, Joel, this, this comment was on an Empire Total War video. In case you guys were aware, the oh, discussion... No, RTS video? Yes. Oh, yeah, man. Joel. Joel, the discussion of RTS game artillery is a very serious topic, okay? I want you to take this very serious comment very seriously and really express this guy's passion about RTS artillery, okay? Can you do that for me? Oh, man. And, and People are maybe, so dumb. Maybe, Why did they maybe, even spend time writing maybe, this stuff? Maybe censor the worst of it just <laughs> for iTunes' sake. I don't know what voice to read for this thing. <laughs> I, I well, reading the voice of someone who spends that. a lot of time watching RTS videos on YouTube. Oh, wait, wait, Joel. Remember what? the reenactment? The artillery man? What? What is that? What are you okay, what, thunk, what are these... thunk thunking, Joel? <laughs> oh, I can't breathe. Uh, uh, I'm not the one who did that. Okay. I, I made a gif out of it and then I <laughs> totally deleted it by accident. Um, but I need to do it again one of these days. But shooting a little scene for Norman, it, it nothing. We actually didn't get any good shots that day uh, or that weekend. But it was a really fun trip. But the best shot was this really big dude, <laughs> oh, just good yeah, old like, boy, good old boy, age. huge guy, like, four hundred, five hundred yeah. pounds, wearing su wearing suspenders and like Civil War era clothes, like suspenders, like a grapefruit with like, legs, like Humpty Dumpty, a grapefruit with legs. <laughs> he was very rotund. Like, so imagine he, was, he, he was egg shaped. He was actually egg shaped. Like overall, he was a very special size. Um, and so he's he's at the front of the cannon and he's loading. And he's got like the big. This is during whatever. the Civil War reenactment. Just I context. Know, for well, I don't know what you call it, Dave. The whatever. It's like a stick with a little. Uh, the, the swab, basically. Yeah. They're, they're, he's they're, he's they're pumping cleaning, the cannon. <laughs> he's cleaning the bore yes, of the cannon. You pick the words, Dave, please. <laughs> he's cleaning the bore of the cannon. He's not pumping the cannon, Joel. I, I was, I was, <laughs> it's called a bore. It's, it's a swab. In my gif, he was. <laughs> so... <laughs> continue. Breathe and continue. So, he's in the front. And he's just... <laughs> <laughs> it looks like this 400 pound man is carrying an 80 and foot long q-tip that he, he uses just, for... he is just slamming the rod in there <laughs> it was loud but like there's this big guy and all of his weight just jiggle jiggle and so i just had to, i just had to do a loop of the gif and it just sounds amazing do you have sounds... a link to this you can upload to imgur real quick I, I have to make it. I have to make it again. Oh. One of these days, we're going to do it. Well, uh, where, how did you send it to us? I, I, when I originally sent uh, it, it was on it was on Dropbox. Yeah, so I linked you guys. You but, deleted it from Dropbox? <sighs> yeah, I just I deleted it by accident. So, anyways, so <laughs> it's just him going thunk thunk. thunk. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. So that guy had his own baggage train in the Civil War. <laughs> was just full of and biscuits. then what was the one guy who asked us about the movie? He's like, you, you're doing one of those, those movie houses or something? Yeah, this is going to play in like a movie this house. Houses. A film house. Film house. <laughs> this is going to be playing one of those film houses? <laughs> I was like, what are you from? <laughs> no, no, Joel, you, were, you guys got to talk to an actual Civil War veteran right there. <laughs> he wasn't reenacting. He thought the battle was real. <laughs> I'm just in time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, all right so I, this one is a are you ready? reenactor. Yes, there we go. <laughs> you the F up. I'd like to see you fire a cannon at 500 meters and hit something at least once in 500 tries, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't rape you. Smiley oh, face. sorry. No, sorry, that's that was a separate, separate comment. comment. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> So I, 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 I Asshole! <laughs> oh, she didn't write you. That's oh, okay. Is, is that, that's like not even a 
what is that? <laughs> so, so the, the second comment, yeah, it, it's really actually kind of weird. It was posted on my, my Daisy Loot video, and all the comments said was, oh, well, at least she didn't rape you, smiley face. <laughs> and I have no idea what it's referencing whatsoever. It's in Who the video she... where you like where you saw the, the loot in the woods and went for it and got shot? Yeah, and it's like, oh, well, at least she didn't rape you. She who? Is that a why, why is... reference? I don't know what's going on. YouTube, stop. <laughs> Just stop. But, you know, comment, subscribe, and hammer that like button. <laughs> don't forget to smash that like button. With your throbbing enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> or anger boner, whichever one you've got going on at the time. What you, what you chewing over there, Jeremiah? Gum. <laughs> nope, just you gum. gum on a podcast? A little bit of tobacco? <laughs> nope, you, you just missed, gum. You, you missed Jeremiah's um, New Zealand accent. It was pretty good. It wasn't very good at all. <laughs> it was horrific. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was a war crime against Australia and New Zealand. <laughs> Does anyone have a was news it? topic in, in chat? This applies to you guys, too. Do you have any news topics you want us to cover really quickly before we go tonight? Or are we actually going to end this podcast on time? I... Is there anything Joel wants to revisit? Yeah, Joel. I, I, hey, I wonder, Joel. What? Can we fight about something tonight? Can you bring up a topic for us to fight about? I I don't I don't want to fight tonight, guys. I'm too tired. Oh, all right. You I'll on? just take it. I just got on the <laughs> podcast to take it. <laughs> um, Same as usual. So you know, uh, <laughs> we can talk about our PS4. Retina. How come? How come you you wanted to get that? Like, um. Well, because <laughs> you, you just did a whole bunch of more weddings. <laughs> I gotta get rid of this money somehow. Oh no! Don't worry. That <laughs> it's money's all coming in so quick. Nope, that Craig money's already gone. Guns. Don't worry. That money's already gone. <laughs> I don't understand that. <laughs> what do you mean? It's been laundered. Well, what, what fun things have you gotten? Or is it all going to the car? The car. Are you, is is the car eating up all the fun money? Or no, no. The, we bought we, more guns. We don't owe anything or... on the car. Are you approaching uh, a Joel level of glowing electronics behind your TV? I mean, no, come on. We're, we're just, no, like adult things. Like, it's all going into savings. Okay. And, oh, oh whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you have savings? <laughs> yeah, like savings, you know, retirement. Um, Practically retired now, old man. Low no, adult, stuff like that. Robert Downey Jr. I don't what? need to hear about these adult things. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to get well, that one and a half X scale, Joel, just so it's big enough. This podcast is rated iTunes mature for savings accounts. <laughs> Wait, I, I don't, I, I don't know if you guys are. See, I'm confused now. Are you guys joking? Or are you actually like asking? Like, there's, there's always good things you can do if you get an influx of cash. You don't just have to buy things with it. Oh, I, I remember. <laughs> you remember what is that? <laughs> I, I remember what that's like. Here, no, no, I'll show you. I'll show you where the money went. One second. Oh, please be a giant stack of cold hard cash, please. With like a rubber band. <laughs> You stay good to me. I'll remember me. I'll remember you. <laughs> You'll remember you. I'll, I'll, I'll remember me. I'll remember me when I get no, rich. No, no, no. This is <laughs> Alzheimer's will not kick you. Joel, Joel's counting his cash, man. All those idiots that work for me for free. I really appreciate this money. <laughs> Joel, you know that 35 millimeter lens of mine you like so much? Yeah. This is the 50 version. I just got it. It's oh, the 50 sweet. millimeter. It is gorgeous. I've only used it at one wedding and one photo shoot so far, but I am in love. Um, now I'm gonna have to shoot an extra scene for Norman just so I can use that lens. For <laughs> anyone who, uh, you know, for anyone who likes photography, this is the Sigma 50 millimeter 1.4 Art. Uh, Sigma has been totally kicking Canon and Nikon's butts in their prime lenses over the past year yeah. or so, um, and I absolutely love that thing. That's the only toy I've gotten. It's not really a toy though because it does make money, but no, everything else is just. I mean, a lot of money came in this month. I'm not going to lie. Wedding season is a good time to be alive, <laughs> but but it, it, it's not as cool as it sounds because... Just that, that... take comfort, Jeremiah, in the fact that you will never catch up to Joel in, when it comes to electronics. So, I mean, oh, you can try. I thought you meant when all that Norman money hits. <laughs> <laughs> Joel's going to be naked in his room. It's going to be completely <laughs> full of money. <laughs> It'll be like 140 degrees in there. Like, all you hear is fans going... Speaking this of being so naked. High. Speaking of being naked. <laughs> Not that I am right now. <laughs> I, was, I was just I was just talking with John the other day that I was like, if I ever like trillions of dollars, I, I, I'm just gonna fight someone over. I'm gonna I'm gonna wear clothing out of money. Just, just <laughs> Joel, you're stagnating into this conversation. Like, Speaking of being naked, I'm talking with John. <laughs> what? Uh, 
let's shut this this train wreck down. <laughs> well, I wanted to know, like, what really got you motivated to buy a PS4, and when? Well, when do you think? Um, I kind of want to get a Potato Four because. I know there are games coming out I'm going to want to play. Like um, Bloodborne, I'm thinking about playing that a lot when it comes out. Um, I'd like to play that with Mark and maybe you. Um, you know, I know there's going to be like the next Uncharted game I'm going to want to play. There are going to be games I know that I'm going to want the the, the uh, potato for too. for probably. Wait, yeah. Wait, wait, are you going to buy GTA on the PS4 and then buy it for the PC later? We'll see. Well, see, here's the thing. <laughs> oh, busted. The birthday is coming up soon, and mm. I would be buying it after my birthday. you got to get all that birthday money in, you know, uh, <laughs> or any birthday money. Who knows? But see if there's just any. Saying, just saying you could be doing some PS4 GTA 5 footage before Dave. I'm not going to record on the PS4. Why not? Well, here's – if I'm being honest, here's my main temptation to get a PS4. A hundred inch screen. That's my temptation. Is Ooh. sitting on the couch sure. with my entire vision filled with glorious 1080p. I would love to with with I would alias love to GTA Blood 5. <laughs> just, Jeremiah, just imagine and, and, how and big Red those... Dead 2 that you will never play. Jeremiah, imagine all those jaggies in GTA 5 at glorious wall filling just amazingness. Yeah, and, remember, you, and imagine all of us having fun without you, Dave. <laughs> that got me real quick. I'm just I like hop on to Teamspeak. He- hello, Joel. Hello? What do you use for a mic on your PlayStation? See, this is one of the things that like I'm really picky about is audio. Well, so now, now's a bad time to actually for that because no third parties hardly. Well, the, uh, the the really nice PS4 one I've been debating on getting, but I mean like no one else has one just yet, so there's no reason bucks. for me to. Well, there's no reason for me to get it just yet. No one else has it. So I was just thinking I have the I have TeamSpeak on my iPhone, so uh, it's supposed to get an update pretty soon to support Bluetooth headsets. Yeah, but you but you got to listen to game audio too. Yeah, no, no. But the thing is, <coughs> with with I haven't worked that one out yet. This is so close, like the proximity. It's I don't have to turn the speakers up loud. It doesn't, it's not going to reverberate back and forth. Like John and I play Xbox with the Xbox headsets. I never hear his game ever. Yeah, but I want good it's, good it's, audio quality. I don't want it to sound like an Xbox headset. Well, you're gonna have okay. to spend like a hundred bucks. Do you yes. Maybe the official or yeah. Are we or just use your higher. just use your headphones for Teamspeak and stuff like that? I don't know. Well, I know it's, supposedly it's, you can you not, can plug a regular not, set of headphones into the jack on the PS4, right? Yeah. But then that doesn't take care of audio. But that gets me. Yeah, I guess not. Sound. Yeah, I mean, I, I was planning on getting the one of those nice mics because the seven point one that has it has like a special like setting for each game that comes out. Mm-hmm. Like a really nice one, like Last of Us. That that's a, apparently it's just really, really phenomenal sound. For it. But that was gonna probably get one of those eventually. Once you know, once James finally has this, so we can play together. Should we just turn the podcast over to talking film and photography? I would love to do that sometime. I Maybe like we should the, make I a big like the, uh, casual conversation. Y'all think I get nerdy about PC gaming? I can go for a long time on photography. Uh, I'll be way more unbearable on photography. But I do think we ought to wrap the podcast down. Um, so I'll go ahead and start the outro. <laughs> so if you want to follow us on Twitter, no, I'm, <laughs> I'll do the terrible white guy rapping over it. <laughs> so if you want to follow us on Twitter, here's what you do. Go to Twitter and type in Germ Gaming Evil Viking or Casual Shenanigans. <laughs> Oh, Alternatively, no. you can <laughs> write you can write into casual shenanigans at gmail.com to be a part of the show. <laughs> Make sure to use that rage boner to hammer the like button on your way out today. <laughs> Rate us in iTunes. And then take that rage boner over to iTunes. <laughs> Give us all your savings on Patreon. And most of all, thank you for watching slash subscribing slash listening to us because we appreciate it even though this is technically the worst podcast we've ever done on a technical level yeah it probably is and i'm going to spend a while working on this i'm sure but um thank you guys everyone for coming out we do appreciate you guys and we do have a lot of fun doing this um even when it doesn't go that smoothly but uh yeah hey, anyone casual. that rap <laughs> does anyone have anything else to say on the way out Ultra. Keep Jolin, Jolin. <laughs> no, no, not Jolin. No, he's saying like Limp Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Have you heard it? Keep rolling, 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 rolling. I keep oh, rolling, rolling. So Joel and Joel and Joel. It's like it. you've I never like watched The Fast and the Furious before or something. I haven't yet. What? No. Joel, I, the Saturday no, after he's, Thanksgiving. He's little parts no, no, of it. listen he, to me. The Saturday after Thanksgiving, yeah. two days afterwards, we are marathoning all six Fast and the Furious movies. Come, come I'll watch come, them yeah. with us. I'll, no, I would love to. That'd be so much fun. Do it. I'm, I try to. Do, I try to do a marathon I, every year. It kind of sucks that they're not on Netflix. I was kind of hoping they would just show up on Netflix sometime. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just go right through them. I'm not even joking. I will be getting the Blu-ray set when the seventh one comes yeah. out. Well, um, if I guys do a marathon, you, can I count all right, uh, no, James, Wait. the marathon is 100% happening. It's it's definitely happening. I have some NVIDIA news to close out the podcast, actually. Oh, some leaked gosh, news. Gosh, fine. Le is it leaked or is it like they're, they're streaming now, aren't they? Uh, this, is not, this is not from official NVIDIA sources, but uh, it's looking like this is a good source. Um, and I'm pulling this from a thread over on r slash build a PC. Um, we have pricing for the 970. Uh Three hundred and twenty nine dollars to no. three forty nine. Really? Right. And um, the GTX nine seventy is ten percent faster than the R nine two ninety. Well, for that money, I mean, it, if they're charging the same amount of money and it's a new generation, it needs to be faster. Most I mean, importantly, expected, that would that's that's the same price as the seven seventy. That's good. Yep. Yeah. Um, and the GTX nine eighty is fifteen percent faster than the R nine two ninety X. How much faster is it than the seven eighty and the seven eighty Ti? Good question. I mean, this is not like overwhelming news, but uh, the pricing looks pretty. Good. I mean, it's not that it's not that amazing to say. Yeah, it's faster than AMD's one year old cards that are significantly <laughs> cheaper. Like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, if uh, the nine eighty is like four hundred and fifty bucks or five hundred bucks. That's pretty good. If it's six hundred dollars or five hundred fifty dollars, that's not that good. No, not at all. But we'll see. We will have more news for you when they come out. When Dave inevitably upgrades. On a minor note, it makes me very happy that they stuck with the Titan style design. I just, I really like that, like uh, metallic look. It's good stuff. They do make good-looking reference cards. AMD's are still stuck in like two thousand and four. But then you get like the cool, like half-naked mermaid DL. No, they don't, not all that, it's mostly just the overall design is, is just <laughs> hideous. But with that, everybody, that is officially the end of the podcast. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for joling with us. And as <laughs> always, stay casual. <laughs>